Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, I'm going to review the AWOL Vision LTV 3000 Pro, which is an ultra short throw projector that supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HDR10+. I'm gonna start out right away by saying that I was completely blown away by this projector. I've reviewed many UST projectors over the last four years of doing YouTube, and spoiler alert, this is easily the best one that I've reviewed so far. There, I said it. This isn't to say that any of the other ones that I've reviewed are no good, the LTV 3000 Pro completely blew away my expectations of an ultra short throw in terms of picture quality, but even more so the amount of features that this one has is beyond what I was expecting. This isn't a sponsored video, I have not been paid to do this, AWOL Vision did send this to me to review, however that doesn't have any bearing on my opinions. As you will see throughout the review, there are just so many features that tick the box for me personally, as someone who is really into to picture quality and manual calibration, this unit has it all. So in this video, I'll do a quick unboxing, show the installation of the included 4K Amazon Fire Stick, discuss all of the picture modes and specs, and whether you should buy one. I will have links down in the description, so make sure you check them out down below, but let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. So first of all, the LTV 3000 Pro comes very nicely packaged. There is the aforementioned Amazon Fire Stick, which supports Dolby Vision and is also licensed for Netflix, Disney+, Apple TV+, and all of the popular streaming apps, which is not always the case with the Android TV supplied on other UST projectors. There is an extended warranty card. In my box, I received two sets of 3D glasses, which will be sold separately, links down in the description. Inside the bag, there is a power cord, tactile but not backlit remote, composite cable for RCA, an instruction booklet, and batteries for the remote. On the back of the projector, we have the SP diff port, service port, USB port, ethernet port, AV input, and two HDMI ports with one having eARC support, which is really nice. The dimensions are 23.6 inches by 3.9 inches by 5.7 inches and weighs in at 21 pounds. And I will say subjectively that the design of the LTV 3000 Pro is slick and it is very polished and it feels and looks every bit the premium product that it is. Before I get into installation, let's go over the specs. We have a 4K triple laser light source which can last for over 25,000 hours of use and can support a screen size from 80 inches all the way up to 150 inches and is certified for Dolby Vision and supports HDR10 and HDR10+, which means that you can watch movies with the correct tone mapping. We have 3000 peak lumens of brightness and a 2500 to 1 contrast ratio for deep blacks in a light controlled environment. There is also a turbo mode for low latency gaming of 15 milliseconds at 4K 60 Hz and 8 milliseconds at 1080p 120 Hz. True 24 frames per second is also supported natively for a cinematic experience as most movies are shot in 24 frames so no need to use MEMC or motion smoothing. However, there is an option for that as well if you so desire. There is a large f2.0 aperture lens developed by Ricoh, which contributes to delivering a precise and sharp image. Additionally, a new firmware update for the LTV 3000 Pro increases the contrast ratio for a 2.5x improvement, which helps reduce the usual compromise between image sharpness and contrast. There is also 3D support, which I'll discuss a little later. And one thing I did was to measure the noise floor while in full power mode. And it was surprisingly quiet at between 37 to 38 dB right next to the projector, which from the seated position was barely audible around 25 dB. And my experience is that most triple lasers are quite noisy. So this was certainly a surprise. Back to installation. And first you open up the hidden compartment and take the fire stick and connect it to the micro USB power cable already inside. Grab the fire stick and insert the plug into HDMI 1 and then it's as easy as popping the door back on and job done. Setting up the fire stick was really easy but I won't focus on that too much as it's pretty much plug and play and you'll see the fire stick in action later in the video. So I'm using my dedicated home theater for this review which has the advantage of being completely light controlled as well as properly acoustically treated so I am testing in the best possible lighting and acoustic conditions. After placing the projector on the box that came in, I began by going through the setup wizard, connecting to my Wi-Fi and downloading all of the updates. I found this to be one of the smoothest and easiest installations so far. 
As the operating system is only for the control and calibration of the hardware, Ewol Vision have kept all of the playback and movie options to the Amazon Fire Stick, opting for a retail product that has all of the support for Dolby Vision, 4K HDR, and is properly licensed for Netflix, Disney+, Apple TV+, and more. Some USD projectors I've reviewed have built-in Android systems, which don't have those apps licensed, which is why I'm making a point of it here. AWOL Vision have thought of the end user experience, which is really appreciated. You can even ditch the Amazon remote and use the projector remote once you enable CEC. And there is an audio sync option, which worked really well to make sure that the picture and the sound are perfectly aligned. You could also use an Apple TV or 4K displayer, which I've also connected for this review to show how versatile the projector is, so you have plenty of options for playback. I also have the LTV 3000 Pro connected to my home theater system, as I installed an HDMI switcher for the purpose of this video, so I'm using my Trinov Altitude 16 and 9.4.6 Crick speaker system to test how immersive and cohesive this projector can be with an endgame setup. More on that later. So as I rested the projector on the box it came with, it turned out that it was the perfect size and height to fill my 120 inch acoustic screen. So I didn't even need to keystone the image. And I always say it's better to get the projector position correctly rather than keystone. But the option is there in case that you're unable to get it lined up like I was. Keystone will shift the image within the available pixels, which means you will lose a little bit of clarity. However, in my case, I didn't need to, and the picture is spectacular. Once I had everything lined up, I fixed the focus on the image, which was simple enough using the four boxes in the corners with the remote. I got it looking pretty sharp, and I was also impressed by the focus uniformity, which is often an issue that I find with UST projectors. However, this was not a problem, likely testament to the Ricoh lens used in the projector. So now we get into the heart of the LTV 3000 Pro, and what I think really sets this projector apart from others that I've tested is that you get separate calibration options for both the white balance or color temperature, as well as the color correction for RGB CMY. This is huge. For someone like me who has a sensor and likes to squeeze the most out of the display, I was able to go in and tweak the settings for HDR, SDR, and Dolby Vision. However, with Dolby Vision, as it's an algorithm, you have to use the presets and play with the brightness, contrast, and chroma, which was fine by me because you still get three preset modes for Dolby Vision. I found that Dolby Vision Vivid was absolutely stunning. The image was so crisp and sharp, yet the tone mapping was very colorful and true to life. The same can be said for the HDR modes. HDR Vivid I also found the best, setting the gamma to dark and the HDR mode to dark as I prefer a high contrast image with nice black levels. There is also a toggle to improve the contrast with dynamic contrast and black levels. However, I didn't notice any change with the black level toggle I did with dynamic contrast. While we are talking about black levels, I will say that for a DLP light source, I was shocked by how good the black levels were. My room is light controlled, but I wasn't expecting that the black bars in letterbox movies would be almost invisible as my experience with DLP light sources has been that you still get a faint glow in CinemaScope movies. While we're talking about DLP, there's always been a reputation for rainbow effect, and I know how to trigger it by moving my eyes quickly from left to right. Um, however, I was unable to trigger it. The absence of a color wheel greatly reduces the rainbow effect, and I could definitely see that this was the case with this projector. To expand on what I was saying earlier about black levels, I am used to seeing DLP light sources struggle with black levels, but I was really surprised how well the LTV 3000 Pro produced really vivid details in the dark areas of an image. As you can see from this demo of John Wick 4, where he's on the rooftop of the Japanese hotel, you can see how deep the black levels are without being crushed. The footage is not edited or modified, it's raw from my camera, and I use this scene often to see how a projector performs in regards to black levels. There is an enhanced adaptive black level toggle, which I mentioned, it doesn't seem to do too much to the image for me. However, this is likely because it's already optimized quite well. With 2500 to 1 contrast ratio, I was really impressed by this aspect of the projector, bearing in mind that I have a very light controlled environment. Most UST projectors will have 
an advantage when it comes to brightness as they are so close to the screen. And with 3000 peak lumens with an entire average across the entire screen of 2400 ANSI lumens, this projector certainly has the brightness to light up your screen. As you can see from the demos, even in the darker scenes, there is plenty of brightness and detail when there is a bright scene. It's just really popping off the screen. Having a bright light source also allows for Dolby Vision to be displayed correctly. And the demos I did with Dolby Vision enabled looked incredible. I love how much detail there is and the tone mapping there was applied really well. It just looks amazing and the colors just look really good. When it comes to colors, having the tri-chroma laser system means no color wheel is needed. And the light engine is capable of producing up to 107% of the BT2020 color space. And this allows for expanded and more accurate colors. And out of the box, the color accuracy was really good, especially in vivid mode, which seems to be the best mode for me in all three modes of Dolby Vision, HDR and SDR. There is also support for HDR10+, which is a separate mode including dynamic metadata to improve the tone mapping and dynamic range for each scene. One of the things that most impressed me about this projector in all of my testing was the color reproduction and how vivid, vibrant and colorful the image is. I'm very familiar with the movies I was demoing and they just seem to be more three-dimensional and vivid from the LTV3000 Pro. One of the other features which I think makes this projector suitable for a home theater is that it supports 24 frames per second natively, which is the standard frame rate for nearly every single movie ever made. This is known as the cinematic frame rate as it harks back to the days when movies were shot on film and played back from a reel at a rate of 24 frames per second. This shouldn't be underestimated as it adds to the cinematic look and feel during playback. I felt fully immersed in what I was watching, so for any purists out there, you will really enjoy this mode. Yes, the LTV3000 Pro supports frame packing, side by side, top and bottom format 3D movies, and will work with almost any DLP Link Active Shutter 3D glasses. You can check the links down below in the description as AWOL Vision do sell them separately. 3D is slowly growing on me. I tried out a few movies and Tron Legacy was pretty trippy, I will say, but if you love your 3D, this will certainly tick all the boxes. Included in the LTV3000 Pro are 36 watt built-in stereo speakers, and the projector can decode Dolby Atmos. However, as I've said numerous times before, Dolby Atmos is object-based sound and requires discrete speakers placed around the room to get the full effect. To comment on these built-in speakers, there is a ton of bass which I didn't expect. And if you're gonna use the LTV3000 Pro as a TV, the built-in speakers sound more like a soundbar than the tinny speakers you get from a standard TV. Of course, don't underestimate a multi-channel speaker setup. And I found that the experience of the image compared with my speaker system, powered by Trinov, felt very very cohesive and every bit as end game as my dedicated projector. Of course, the speakers did benefit from my room being acoustically treated, but they certainly sounded pretty good for built-in speakers. As the LTV3000 Pro has eARC, you could also send an uncompressed audio signal back to your processor as well if you're using the built-in Fire Stick, which is really nice. While I don't have Control 4 in my theater setup, AWOL Vision have advised me that the LTV3000 Pro and the LTV3500 Pro support Control 4 integration, so you can access the features of the projector from within Control 4 and turn it off and on and use other features through that ecosystem. I don't have one in my setup, so I can't demo it for you, but it is there if you need it. So in summary, if you're on the hunt for a new display or upgrading your current one, I wouldn't look past the LTV3000 Pro. I will have links down in the description where you can check current pricing and links to where you can buy one. There is also the LTV3500 Pro, which is identical in every way, except you get an additional 500 peak lumens. So if you need something even brighter, I will have links to that model down below as well. I would like to say that to date, this is the best UST projector that I've had in for review. It ticks all the boxes from brightness, contrast, tone mapping for Dolby Vision and custom calibration controls, as well as it's nice and quiet, has excellent build quality and performance. So guys, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, hit the thumbs up button. And if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing for more reviews and home theater related content. Make sure you leave any questions down below and I'll be sure to answer them. But that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one.
Bye for now.